All right, and we'll get started in child's pose this evening. <clears throat> So sitting back on your heels, allowing the torso to fold over your thighs, releasing the forehead to the earth, taking an arm variation that feels good for you. So if you like arms extended out in front of you, or maybe something a little bit more restorative, less active, allowing the arms to come along, down along by the sides, maybe cupping the heels. Just um, just taking a couple moments here to check in and connect with the body. Sometimes the hardest part of our practice is just showing up. So I wanna thank you for making time for you, making time to care for and nurture your body. Start to connect with the breath, just noticing the natural rhythm of your breath. And so in this somewhat compressed posture, how does the breath feel as your belly and chest press against your thighs? Maybe you feel the breath landing more in your back, feeling the back expand and lift up. just noticing the texture of the breath too. So maybe it feels warm here. Maybe it feels heavy, raspy. And what is the rhythm of the breath? It's the current pattern, so. You're feeling like you're taking big, bigger inhales and exhales, or maybe they're somewhat shallow here because of the compression. And we're going to set up our Ujjayi Pranayama, our victorious breath, the oceanic sounding breath. And I invite you to widen out your legs, so kind of opening up the torso in between the legs. And this might just help make the setting up this breath a little bit easier from this posture. And then finding a constriction in the back of the throat, creating a sort of whisper sound with the mouth closed and just breathing in and out of the nose. And set up a pattern of breath that you can maintain during the for the duration of class. So maybe that pattern is a three count inhale and a three count exhale, or maybe the exhale is longer than the inhale, like a three count inhale, five count exhale. But something to help keep you connected, something to tether the mind to your practice, to your body. So that when practice is challenging, you can calm the breath with that rhythm. I'm sorry, calm the body with that rhythm, calm the mind with that rhythm. Or if your mind starts to wander using the breath to reconnect. I'll give you a couple more moments just to establish that pattern and connection here. And very slowly coming up, we're just gonna kind of slide forward, coming onto our belly. So probably no real graceful way to get there. Maybe there is, but it's not gonna be graceful for me. <laughs> but coming onto the belly and just allow your forehead to rest on the earth, tops of the feet pressed onto the top, onto the mat. 
And hands and arms can just be anywhere comfortable, maybe along your side, or maybe resting down by your ribs. Tilt, um, turn your cheek, uh, turn to face to your left, allowing the left, I'm sorry, the right cheek to rest onto the mat. And then you're gonna reach your right arm out to the side like a T. And then using your left hand, pop your left hand down by your ribs. And you're gonna turn and open up onto your right side. So we're getting into this little shoulder stretch here. And then allow the left foot to come behind the right leg like a kickstand. Left knee opens up to the sky and then allow your right head to rest back down on the earth. So maybe you're resting on your temple or your cheek. If this feels like too much of a stretch, you can tilt your body back a little bit more toward the mat. You can also adjust your arm to come down a little bit to make a shorter angle, smaller angle. Or if you need more stretch, you can reach your arm up a little bit higher. And you can also take that left hand and tuck it uh, behind the low back, opening up the chest a little bit more creating a little bit more tension and pressure on that shoulder. Just connect with breath here. On your next exhale, replant your hand if you moved or adjusted it, and then slowly roll back over to your, onto your tummy. And allow your, allow your gaze to drift over to the right, resting onto your left cheek. Extend the left arm out long to the side like a T. Draw that right hand in toward your ribs and then gently roll open, allowing your uh, torso to open up to the right. Using that right foot to come behind your left leg and then making the same adjustments or modifications here or knowing that, I'm sorry, that the modifications and adjustments here are available on the left side and honoring that maybe what you need on the left is different than what you need on the right. Place your right hand down back onto the mat. If you adjusted, slowly roll back over onto your, onto your tummy. Turn your, your gaze over to the left and draw your hands into your side and pause here. Stack palms and allow your forehead to rest on your palms. And we're gonna draw the right knee <clears throat> up toward the, onto the side, up to the side toward our, our, le our right elbow. So it's probably not gonna reach so left leg is still out long and you're drawing the right knee up toward right elbow. Forehead is resting on your palms. Breathing here. I have a nice practice for our hips today. We're really gonna be getting into our hips, opening up and waking up the sacral chakra. And your exhale, release your right leg down long once again, and then draw the left leg up toward the left elbow. Drawing your attention into your hips here, to the low back. Your upper thighs, your hip socket here. And on your next exhale, draw that left leg back down long to meet the right. And just pause for a moment. And when you're ready, we're gonna shift all the way back up into tabletop. <clears throat> Shoulders are stacked over wrists. Hands are about shoulder width apart index fingers point, pointing toward the top of the mat. And you're pressing into all 10 fingers, lifting out of the shoulders here. 
Knees are about hips distance apart, stacked below hips. And we're gonna draw, we're gonna kick our right heel up to the sky. Mm -hmm. We're gonna pause here for a moment, trying to find an even distribution of weight between our, um, all of the remaining limbs that are holding and propping us up. If this feels like a lot on the wrist, you can always come up on blocks or you can come up on fists. Might be a little bit easier on the wrists if this creates any kind of tension. Take an inhale. And then on the exhale, we're gonna make a big sweeping moment motion with the right knee. And we're gonna draw the right knee in toward the right tricep. Swing it down in between our chest and then kick it back up. We're gonna take these hip circles, beautiful, yep. And we're gonna do a couple more rounds, letting your breath guide this movement trying to stay neutral. So try not to kick open. We're trying to stay firmly planted in our hands. Yep, beautiful ladies. And then switch directions. So allowing the knee to come up through center, drawing it up to the right tricep and then back behind this. Yep, beautiful. Couple more rounds just like this. <laughs> and go ahead and allow the right knee to come down to meet the left. Pause. And notice how your right side feels. Maybe you notice your right, um, your shoulders have fired up a little bit here. And then when you're ready, kick that left heel to the sky and then draw the left knee to left tricep, bring it down to the middle, kicking it back up and taking into these circles. Once again, letting the rhythm of the breath guide this movement. And then just being mindful again, that you're not kicking up opening too far over and dumping into uh, your right side here. We're trying to keep a neutral balance between the limbs that are remaining on the mat here. And then switch sides. So allowing the left knee to come through center, coming up to the shoulder and then kicking up behind us. Draw the low navel, the navel into the spine. So really activating the core and using the strength of the core as well as the power of your hips and your legs here. Really nice. One more time all the way around, finishing with that left heel to the sky, releasing the left knee down to meet the right. Shifting the hips back to your heels, coming it back into your child's pose. Releasing the forehead to the earth. I invite you to allow your arms to come down along your sides here. And cupping your heels in your hands. Reconnect with the breath if you lost that breath pattern. I'll take two more rounds of breath here. I encourage you to use this pose if you at any time you need to pause during our practice. Um, this is a great pose for self-reflection self and introspection. So if something comes up for you today in practice, by all means, um, feel free to come back to this pose. If we're doing anything that's challenging or you need to catch your breath, or maybe you just lose the pattern of your breath, and this is a great place to go to reset that pattern as well. When you're ready, tuck your toes, lift your hips, meeting in our first downward facing dog. And if you have a ritual that you like to take with kind of warming up and wiggling out your down dog or quote unquote walking your dog, <laughs> go ahead and do that now. So maybe that looks like pedaling your feet, wiggling your hips from side to side. Maybe that's some rolls into plank and shifting back. Just 
Just staying connected with the breath and making sure that breath is guiding your movement. And let's check in with our posture. So go ahead and pause, hands about shoulder width apart, index finger pointing toward the top of the mat. All 10 fingers are pressed firmly into the mat. We're lifting out of our shoulders. So really feel that space in your armpits and then wrap your triceps around underneath. So your triceps are facing toward the mat. Uh, your, your navel draws into your spine, low ribs tucked in, hips are reaching to the sky. Feet are about uh, hips distance apart. So about a fist and a half between your toes. That's about how much space should be between your feet, about a fist and a half. You keep a slight bend in your knees or maybe a deep bend in your knees and your heels are reaching energetically to the earth. So you don't get bonus points if your heels touch. If your heels are touching, it means you have to work harder than the rest of us. <laughs> and then maybe lifting all 10 toes off of the mat so you can really feel that energetic stretch in the heels and the back of the legs and then releasing the toes back down. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. Exhale, walk, step or jump to the top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, palms to shins. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, reach the hands to the sky. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Go ahead and take your hands and draw them to your hips. And we're gonna do some of the, some more hip circles, hook more, um, more hip exploration here from our mountain pose. So inhale, draw the left knee to about uh, hip level, and then open up that hip, your right knee to the right side, yep. And then we're gonna do just some hip circles. So allowing the right knee to drop down and come up and open down, up and open. using your breath to guide your movement. And then switch directions. Coming down, open, closed and down. Beautiful. One last round, all the way around. Release your right foot to meet the left and then let's switch sides. So shifting weight into the right foot. Inhale, draw the left knee up to about hip level. Open up that hip to the left, your knee to the left. I keep saying hip. <laughs> Open your, leg, your knee to the left and then drop it down. Coming back up and open. I'm just playing with those circles. Breathing and switch sides. Left knee down, left knee open, left knee closed, and back down. A couple more rounds here. Last round, release the left foot down to meet the left. Inhale, reach your hands to the sky. Exhale, keeping a slight bend in knees, coming into forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, palms to shins, flat spine. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, high plank. Let's hold for a breath, checking in with this posture too. Hands are about shoulder width apart. Uh, option to release the knees to the earth or keep them lifted. Shoulders are stacked over wrists, pressing firmly into all 10 fingers. Again, lifting out of the armpits, lifting out of the shoulders, finding that space in the armpits, wrapping the triceps behind your arms. Low navel is tucked up and in. Your hips are about shoulder level. Legs are strong and active. Thighs are reaching to the sky. Spine is long and you're reaching energetically out through the crown of your head. Inhale. Take one more inhale, <laughs> exhale, lower all the way down to the belly, release the tops of the feet to, on top of the mat. Inhale, reach the heart forward, cobra pose, pressing the tops of the feet into the mat, pressing your pubic bone into the mat. Exhale, push up through that strong plank, 
Shift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. Exhale, walk, step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, reach your hands to the sky. Exhale, let's cactus our arms here. So um, arms come out to the side, kind of like goal posts, and then pull your heart forward. So finding a, a, a gentle back bend or a bend in the back, but coming from the upper part of the back, the thoracic spine here. Take another inhale. And then on your exhale, release your hands to heart center and pause. Inhale, reach your hands to the sky. Exhale, forward fold, slight bend in the knees, hinging forward at the hips. Inhale, halfway lift, palms to shins. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, plank pose, holding plank for a breath, inhale. Exhale, shift your heart, sh shoulders forward um, beyond your fingertips. Option to release your hands to the earth, lower or your knees to the earth, lower halfway chaturanga. Exhale, release the tops of the feet and lift the heart forward, coming into upward facing dog. Take an inhale. Exhale, tuck the feet, push up and back, lifting those hips to the sky for your downward facing dog. We'll do two more rounds of sun salutation A. Inhale, bend the knees, gaze forward. Exhale, walk, step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise up, reach the hands to the sky. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, reach your hands up. Exhale, forward fold, slight bend in the knees. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your hands, step back, plank pose. Option to take your vinyasa with a cobra or up dog this time. So for uh, up dog, shifting your shoulders forward, lowering halfway cobra pose, releasing the tops of the feet. Inhale, reaching the heart forward, cobra um, up dog. Exhale, shifting the hips up and back. From downward facing dog, bend the knees, gaze forward. Exhale, walk, step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach your hands to the sky. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Inhale, reach up one more time. Exhale, bending forward at the hips. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, spine is long. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Option to take your vinyasa with cobra or up dog. Releasing all the way for, to your belly for cobra. Inhale, reaching the heart forward, pressing the tops of the feet into the mat. Exhale, pushing up through a strong plank, meeting in downward facing dog. Option to take a child's pose here, checking in with the breath. <clears throat> Oh, you ladies are fierce and ready to fight. You guys are ready to play tonight. I love it. Okay, cool. Let's go. <laughs> Inhale, reach your right heel to the sky. Bend the knee, open the hip. And pause here for a moment. Finding an equal distribution of weight between your left and your right hand so that you're not shifting open over to the left or dumping over into one shoulder or the other. So we really want to find balance and equal distribution here. And then go ahead and do a little um, rotation in the hips. So we've already done a lot to open up the hip tonight. So this actually might feel a little bit different than it normally does. And maybe you'll enjoy this a little bit more. And, and go ahead and pause with your hip circles. So um, keeping that right hip open, so the knee pointing up toward the sky, take another inhale. And on your exhale, you're gonna shift forward to plank, right knee to right tricep. Pause, take an inhale. Exhale, lift a little bit higher out of your shoulders. Option to release the knee to the earth. There's still plenty of work to be doing here. One more round of breath, inhale. And then on your exhale, plant your right foot on the outside of your right hand. Release the left knee to the earth, coming into this passive lizard pose. Pause for a moment, checking in with your breath.
And on your next exhale, start to shift your hips back, but keep the right shoulder and right knee connected. So really press the right knee into the right shoulder here. So coming into this kind of modified half splits, inhale, shift back forward, maybe getting a little bit deeper into the left hip flexor here. Exhale, shift you back once again. And then just kind of free flow back and forth. So if there's a spot that you like, maybe linger in that spot. Maybe you just enjoy the movement of shifting back and forth. But letting the breath guide your movement, whatever that movement is here. When you come back to your passive lizard, pause and inhale. We're gonna open up, open twist to the right. So reaching the right hand to the sky and opening our tor torso over to the left. I'm sorry, over to the right. Making sure that we're not dumping into this left arm. So we're really strong and active here. We're not hyperextending the elbow. There's some balance in that joint. We wanna protect the joint here. So maybe finding a slight bend in the elbow and lifting out of the shoulder here, reaching to the sky. Tuck the toes, lift that back leg. So now we're in this twisted active lizard. Take an inhale, exhale, plant the hand on the inside of the right foot. Start to find some gentle rocks back and forth. So really using them, uh, the back foot to kind of push you forward and back. And on your exhale, you're gonna step all the way up, left foot steps on the outside of the left hand. Yep. And then we're gonna inhale, come up to this half active yogi squat. At the top of our mat. Go long in the spine, pressing into the feet, sinking a little deeper into those hips. Take another inhale. My legs are on fire, I know yours are too. <laughs> And exhale, slowly rise up, coming into this wide-legged mountain pose. We'll heel toe the feet in toward one another, coming into mountain. Draw your hands to your hips. On an inhale, draw the left knee in, coming again into that hip level. Open the left hip up, keeping the right foot planted, stepping back coming into goddess pose. So both toes are pointed toward the outside, um, front and back of the mat, and then begin to sink into your hips here, coming into a seat. Beautiful. Knees are, are um, pulled back. So imagine if I had a string or rope tied around your knees, your knees are being pulled back behind you. Your spine is long. Shoulders are about stacked over hips and you're reaching energetically out through the crown of your head. Hands come to heart center today. Sink a little deeper into those hips. Yeah, feel the burn. <laughs> if you need less, you can stand up, get a little bit taller. If you need more, sink deeper, baby. There you go. We'll take one more round of breath here. Take an inhale. And then on your exhale, slowly, slowly, slowly start to rise up. Straighten out those legs. Turn the toes out toward the left side of your mat. Draw your hands to your hips. Take another inhale. And then on your exhale, slowly fold forward, releasing your hands to the earth. Let the crown of the head be heavy and enjoy this nice passive reflective pose. Checking in with the body here. Again, our folds, our forward folds, our opportunities for introspection and self-reflection. So checking in with how you're feeling, checking in with the heart here, checking in with your body, checking in with the mind. And I'll be quiet to let you enjoy and think for a moment. Bring your hands to your hips here. Actually, sorry, keep your hands planted on the earth. 
rotate your right toes toward the top of the mat and start to bend into that right knee. And then frame that right foot with your hands, stepping the right foot back, coming into high plank pose, option to now take your vinyasa. So shifting forward, lowering halfway for chaturanga, releasing the tops of the feet and lifting the heart forward for upward facing dog. Tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. I know you guys loved it. Let's do it on the other side. <laughs> Inhale, reach the left heel to the sky, bend the knee, open the hip, pause. Finding balance between the left and right. And then go ahead and enjoy those hip circles. Maybe you feel a little bit more open. Mm, feels really good to me today. And pause with that left knee to the sky. Take an inhale. Exhale, shift forward to plank, left knee to left tricep, hold. Take an inhale. And exhale. Take another inhale. <laughs> you thought you were done. Exhale, plant the left foot on the outside of the left hand. Release the right knee to the earth. And then enjoy those little shifts forward and back. So on your exhale, drawing the hips back. Inhale, pulls you back forward. And then any other little adjustments or movements that feel good, or if you want to pause in a certain spot that feels good, you can pause there. The next time you come forward, you can pause and stop. And then inhale, open your torso to the left and reach that left hand to the sky. Sink a little deeper into the hips. Lift out of the right shoulder, making sure that you're not hyper flexing or hyper extending that elbow. So protecting that joint. Tuck the back toes. <laughs> Lift your right, heel, right side to the sky. Plank the left hand down to meet the left foot on the inside of the left foot. Start to push forward and back with the right, out, from your right toes. And then exhale, step all the way forward into your yogi squat. Sinking the hips down, coming up halfway. Spine is long. I think my, um, my screen went out. Sink a little, little deeper in those hips, you badass babes. I see you. <laughs> in a spotlight over here now. I think you guys can see me okay. Okay, on your exhale, go ahead and rise up, coming into mountain pose. And then take hands to hips, draw your right knee to about uh, hip height. Take an inhale. And then exhale, open all the way up, goddess, coming into our goddess pose. And I'm gonna turn around and face you guys. So you guys aren't looking at Maria. <laughs> Again, slaying those knees out behind you. Shoulders are stacked about over hips, spine is long, reaching energetically out through the crown of the head. Hands are at heart center. Think a little deeper. If you're looking for more, get deeper. <laughs> if you're looking for a little less, come on up. Use the wisdom, use your own wisdom to discern the level of your practice today. Take another inhale and then exhale. Slowly straighten the legs, point the toes to the right side of your mat, draw your hands to your hips, take an inhale. Exhale, forward fold, wide-legged forward fold. Hands come down to the earth. Maybe heel toe the feet out a little bit wider this time. Release the crown of the head to the earth. Mm. 
Maybe enjoy this nice natural spinal decompression. Checking in with the body, checking in with the breath here. Let's see how we're doing on time. Oh yeah, we got lots of time for playing. <laughs> Draw your hands, actually keep your hands where they are. <laughs> Point your left toes toward the top of the mat, spin onto the ball of the back foot, frame your feet, your left foot with your hands, step back, high plank pose. Option to take your vinyasa here or meet and down dog. <clears throat> From down dog, inhale, reach the right heel to the sky, bend the knee, open that hip again. Take an inhale, exhale, right knee to right tricep and hold, yeah. Take an inhale and then exhale, plant that right foot on the outside of the right hand. We're gonna stay active in this lizard here. So if you like the earlier variation with the knee release to the earth, if that feels better for you, by all means, take that option. Otherwise, we're gonna keep that left leg um, active and then we're gonna enjoy those little shifts forward and back again. So coming into this kind of half, half standing split variation. Finding a pause. When you come back to the top, spin the back foot flat so that the left toes are facing the left side of the mat. And then we're gonna walk the hands in to, toward the left foot coming into this side lunge. And then walking the hands back over, coming back into our active lizard and then walking them back over to the left again side lunge, using our breath to guide us back to the front, and then back to side lunge. And we're gonna hold our side lunge. So if you wanna stay low and enjoy this variation of the side lunge, you're welcome to stay low here. If you'd like to come up a little bit higher and make this a little bit more active, exploring the challenge. So lifting up out of that hip instead of sinking low. Yep. Right toes reach toward the sky. Exhale, release the hands to the earth. Walk them back forward again. Keep that back foot, um, that back, those back toes pointing toward the left side of the mat. We're gonna inhale all the way up, coming into warrior two. Shoulders stacked over hips here. Plugging the, the, the both, both um, thighs into the pelvis, into the hip socket. So kind of spiraling and lifting up out of the legs, bending a little bit deeper back into that right knee, arms extended out to the side like a T, gazes out over right index finger or middle finger, dropping your shoulders away from your ears, lifting the ed edges of your mouth up to the sky. <laughs> Inhale, reverse your warrior, right arm comes up overhead, left arm, slides down left thigh, exhale, release the right forearm to right thigh, open the torso up to the left, reach the left arm up overhead, extended side angle. So feel a long, beautiful line of energy from the back, uh, I'm sorry, from the, the left foot all the way up to your fingertips. So all the way up that left side of your body. Hold here and breathe. <laughs> Inhale, come back up, warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Maybe heel toe the, the left foot in slightly so there's a shorter distance between the, your two feet. Reach your right arm out, 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 out. Reach, 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 reach as far as you can. Draw the left hand into the, onto your hip. Exhale, release the back of your right hand onto your shin on the inside of your, your calf. 
and open your torso up to the left. Triangle pose, Trikonasana. Keeping a slight bend in the right knee, so avoiding any hyperextending. Again, we wanna protect these joints. We're using the strength of our muscles around the joint to protect the joint and to be stronger. This is how we prevent injuries. This is how we help protect our tender little joints. Inhale, bend the right knee. Plant your hands around your right foot. Step the right foot back. Option to take your vinyasa here or meet in down dog. All right, left side, left side, guys. Inhale, reach the left heel to the sky. Bend the knee, open the hip. You guessed it on your exhale. Shift forward to plank, left knee, left tricep. Oh yeah. Hold, hold, hold. Keep that right leg active, strong, lifting out of the shoulders, lifting that, that knee high up if you can up to your tricep, up to your shoulder. Exhale, step the left foot on the outside of the left hand. And then exhale, shifting forward and back from those high to low lunges. Staying connected with the breath. Pause when you come forward. Spin that right foot flat on the, onto the mat. Right toes are facing toward the right side of the mat. And then walking forward and back into those yogi side lunges. Low lunges, yeah. Coming back, blizzard. And side lunge. So using your breath to walk you between poses. These look great, ladies. And we'll do one last round. The next time you get into your side lunge, option to stay here and keep it passive. If you'd like to lift up and make this a little bit more active, letting the left toes point toward the sky, lifting out of your hips here, hands come to heart center and breathe. Sinking into the hips. Exhale, release your hands to the earth. Walk your hands back over on the inside of the left foot. Keeping that right foot flat, right toes face toward the right side of the mat. You're gonna inhale, open up all the way for your two. Plugging those thigh bones into the pelvis, lifting up, spiraling. Torso is facing toward the right side of the mat. Shoulders are stacked over hips, sinking a little deeper into that left knee. Arms come out to the side like a T. Gaze is out over the right, I'm sorry, left middle finger. Shoulders sliding down the back, creating romance between our ears and our shoulders. Let there be longing. <laughs> Inhale, reverse your warrior. Left hand, left arm comes up overhead, right arm. Along the, the right thigh, exhale, extended side angle, left forearm, left thigh, right arm reaches up and overhead. Yeah, and enjoy this nice long line of, of energy from that right foot all the way up the leg, the side body and the right arm. Plug that right shoulder bone into your shoulder socket. Again, creating distance between the shoulder and the ear wherever we can. Inhale, come back, warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Heel toe, the right foot in, maybe an, a foot or two. Reach out on, with the left hand. Reach, 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 reach. Draw the right hand to left, right hip. Exhale, left outside of the left hand on the inside of your calf and opening the torso up to the right. Breathe. Some may say the hard part has, we've, we've done our, our, we finished the hard part of class, but we still have our cool down. 
I might argue that's harder. Staying connected with the breath, calming the mind. Inhale, come back up, bend into that left knee, spin onto the heel of the ball of the back foot, plant your hands, step the left foot back. Option to take your vinyasa or meet in downward facing dog. And check and see how we're doing on time. Perfect. <clears throat> And when you get to mountain, go ahead and sit all the way through. We're gonna meet with our legs extended out long in front of us. My toes. <laughs> if you have a blanket or anything like that that you wanna sit up on for a little bit of height so that you have kind of a more natural curvature in your spine so that the low back isn't rounded, you're welcome to grab a blanket. Otherwise, staying here, we're going to take our right heel, our right foot, and we're going to wrap it around and tuck it in toward the right glute. So we don't want to be tilted up. So if that means that you're extended out further than tucking it in, then take that variation. And inhale, reach your hands to the sky. And with a long active spine, hinge forward from the hips and pause. Release the hands to the earth and we're just gonna hold this active uh, stretch, this half hurdler stretch. Take another inhale. And then if it feels good, if you would like, if you have more space and you wanna fold forward, go ahead and allow your spine to round here and release your forehead toward your knee, toward your leg. Again, no bonus points if your head reaches your knee. If it does, good for you. You have to work a little bit harder than the rest of us <laughs> to experience the sensations and the relief of this pose. Stay connected to the breath. The heart is starting to slow down. And so the mind we can begin to wander. So using that breath to stay tethered to this moment. On your next exhale, begin to walk your hands back, lifting your torso up and pausing. So staying here and we're gonna reverse this fold. So we're actually gonna open up, coming back onto um, our hands. And then if it feels good in the body and it doesn't feel like too much pressure in the hip or in your socket, your hip socket or in your knee joint, coming back down onto elbows. If you're experiencing any type of pain, come back up and you're gonna stay in this pose here. If you come down onto your forearms, you feel like you have more space, you can lay down all the way. And releasing your arms down onto the mat palms facing to the sky. This should feel really nice. Breathing, staying connected to the breath. In the same way we came down, so just start to slowly come up. So if you went all the way down, Coming up onto your forearms, onto your hands, and then pushing yourself up, releasing the right foot to meet the left, and then just wiggle out the legs. And then when you're ready, go ahead and tuck the left, uh, left heel into your left glute. Staying grounded in your sit bones here. Inhale, reaching the hands to the sky. Keeping a long active spine, hinging forward at the, at the hips and pausing at your first line of resistance. Release the hands to the earth, keeping the spine long and active. Just take a couple rounds of breath here. Hopefully enjoying the relief and the sensations in the back of the leg. This might feel like a lot and if it does, send your breath to the places where you're feeling the 
most sensation. Take another inhale and then exhale. If it feels good. Release forward, allow your spine to relax around the spine, releasing the, the forehead to your knee, to your leg. And the next exhale, walking the hands back, lifting up the torso, and then keep walking back, allowing the hands to come back behind your glutes, Just pausing there if that feels good. If you'd like a little bit more coming onto your forearms, and if you'd like even more than that, coming all the way down onto your back. Breathing. And when you're ready, come back up. Releasing the left foot to meet the right. We're going out those legs once again, and then rolling down all the way back onto your spine. Uh, bend the knees, plant the feet about a foot or so in front of the, the glutes, the hip, the, the, your body, your butt. <laughs> and then heel toe your feet out to the width of your mat. Reach your arms out to the side like a T, take an inhale. And then on your exhale, allow your legs to fall over to the left. Pause. If this, if this feels good, or it feels like a lot of sensation, stay right here. If you'd like some additional support and closing that right, um, that right hip and getting into that right side body, crossing the left ankle over the right thigh and creating some traction there, pulling the knee down a little bit more to the earth. This is our last round of poses before Shavasana. And I'd like to invite you to just start cultivating a little bit of gratitude for your body. We do so much, we ask so much of our body. I think we often fail to remember and honor the great things that it does for us. If you took the cross leg variation, you can release the left foot down to the earth. And then on your inhale, draw your knees back up toward the sky. And then exhale, just switching sides, releasing your legs over toward the right side of the mat. Pausing before you take any further variation. And then if you'd like to take that option, go ahead and cross the right knee, right ankle over left knee for that additional traction. So every one of your bodies is strong and amazing and all the things that we did together during this practice. And I think we're so hard on our bodies, especially, um, well, I would say especially as women, but I mean, men and women, but we're all so critical of our bodies. And this is the beauty of, the, of what our bodies can do. If you took the cross leg variation, release the right foot to the earth. Draw your knees back up towards center. And with that wide legged, um, with your feet out wide, go ahead and allow your knees to come in and rest. So finding a little release on the low back. And when you're ready, go ahead and take your Shavasana 
uh, position of choice. So extending the legs out long with the arms out to the side, palms facing the sky, nestling the shoulders beneath, uh, beneath you is a traditional variation. However, I think that this pose is such an important pose and I think it's so important to find comfort in this pose. So if there's a variation of this pose that you prefer, so maybe that's on your belly, legs up a wall, maybe a bolster or blanket underneath your knees, but just take a couple moments here to, to, to get comfortable or maybe it's to come over onto your side. Whatever that variation is though, I ask you to find something that um, feels good to you. And I invite you to stay present with the sensations that are happening in your body. Stay present with the glory of the work that you just put in. And I will let you rest in peace for the next few moments. And I will invite you to come out in just a couple moments. Enjoy. The beauty of having a home practice and practicing at home is that if you would like a longer Shavasana, you are welcome to stay just as you are. If you're ready to come out, you can start to find some gentle movements, maybe a puppy. <laughs> 
Shifting over onto a side. And when you're ready, pushing yourself up to a seat. Um, if you'd like to bring your hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra, and um, I truly mean this every time I say this, and just with a heart full of gratitude, <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> it's such an honor <laughs> to share this practice. And uh, to have you ladies join me every week. Uh, the light in me sees and honors the light in you. Namaste.